Three years ago when I started this amazing hobby of flying drones with this, the Mavic Pro from DJI, I had never flown a drone before. Now, I learned a lot over the past three years. I've tried out a variety of different quadcopters and I've had fun with pretty much every single one of them. Now lately, I've kind of been on a mission to find the perfect prosumer level drone because the thought of flying drones as an occupation has actually entered my mind. Things like land mapping, inspections, emergency services are all very appealing to me. Now I thought I had the perfect prosumer drone when I got the Mavic 2 Pro, but the one drone that's always been in the back of my mind is this one right here, the Phantom 4 Pro version 2, which we weren't able to get for almost a year, and now it's back on the market. So when you're done watching this video, I hope that you will have at least a little better idea of which choice to make, the Mavic 2 Pro or the Phantom 4 Pro version 2. So the first thing that I want to do right away is I'm going to put the pros and cons, in my opinion, of the Phantom 4 Pro version 2 right up here on the screen so you can see my thoughts right away. So go ahead and pause the video real quick and read through those. Now, because saying Phantom 4 Pro version 2 Plus is quite a mouthful, I'm just going to say Phantom for the remainder of this video. So I hope the takeaway for you after watching this is that you have some useful information that's gonna help guide you when it comes to making a decision between buying the Mavic 2 Pro or the Phantom 4 Pro. Now, I do wanna say thank you to DJI. First of all, this video is not sponsored or anything like that. They did send this to me for a few weeks to test out and let all of you know my thoughts. I do have to return it next week and I really do appreciate the opportunity. So at the making of this video, these two drones are exactly the same price. So it's a pretty difficult decision for sure. Now I should say that I do have the plus version of the Phantom 4 Pro 2.0, which is the one that comes with the attached screen here. Now that does add nearly $500 to the price. So let's talk about that real quick first. Using my smartphone or my iPad mini on my other drones is a necessary evil when I've been flying them. And I've kind of become adjusted to that. But having this dedicated screen over the past couple of weeks has been really nice. It's extremely bright. It's so easy to see in bright sunlight. It's really convenient that I don't have to hook up my phone. And it works the same as my Android phone. Now, the one issue that I did have with this is I couldn't log in at first to the DJI Go4 app right away because I was out flying out in the field and there's no internet connection. And so I had to actually drive home, connect through the Wi-Fi, log in that way, and then I was able to fly after that. So that first time, if you do get this, just make sure that you log in to the DJI Go4 app for the very first time where you have Wi-Fi, where you have internet connection. Now, another thing that I wish that the controller had was I wish the screen was adjustable then on just one axis because right now you can only swivel it up or down you can't rotate it or you can't move it in and out so i think that would be nice to be able to adjust it in different ways but otherwise i think it's pretty convenient it's just not 470 dollars more convenient so what i want to do is i just kind of want to walk you through my five flights or actually six flights if you count the cinematic footage flight i got yesterday so i flew this thing six times and I had some pretty big problems right away, and I'll tell you why here in just a minute, but uh, I just wanna walk you through those six flight or five flights and just kinda tell you how the process went of learning how to fly this thing because I had never flown one, I had never even seen one before uh, in real life. And so I knew it was gonna be a little bit different, so I kinda wanted to go out each time and try to get a little bit better at learning how this thing works. So my first flight was actually pretty boring. I was just trying to get used to the controller. You know, it's so much bigger than the Mavic controllers that I'm used to, and the sticks are different, everything's just different. So what I noticed right away, the drone was not behaving like I expected it to. So I was pretty frustrated right away. I flew about a half a battery that day and I just decided to give up and go out again the following day. There's a couple of things that I wanted to mention while they're still fresh in my head. So I'm gonna talk about those right now. The first one I noticed is that the props do get in the frame when you're flying against the wind. If there's any kind of wind like today, it's about 15, maybe 20 mile per hour wind. Of course, it's gonna be higher when you're up higher, 
But when I was flying into the wind, the props got into the image. And so they got into the image more than I thought they would. So that was a little bit unexpected for me. The second thing is one time when I turned really sharp, I was coming back home, the low battery warning was on and I turned really sharp to the left and the drone kind of tilted and almost looked like it was going to flip over. At least it did on the video. Now it corrected itself, but that's something I I've never experienced with my Mavics and I turn sharp all of the time with my Mavics. And so, you know, it's definitely more steady in the wind if you're flying slowly, if you're doing cinematic type stuff. And if you're turning really sharp, at least in this instance, it actually, I felt like it was gonna tip over. I kind of freaked out a little bit. So that's the other thing. And then another thing I noticed is that the controller, it gets pretty hot. Like there's a fan inside and I know that's meant to keep it relatively cool, but um, it actually got hotter than I thought it would be. And so, you know, not where it was unreasonable, but I had to move my fingers a few times because the controller did get pretty warm. So I'm just trying to think what would happen if it was 90 degrees outside and I was flying, you know, how hot would that controller get? And uh, so those are just three things that I noticed flying it for the first time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out again tomorrow and I'm gonna give you my thoughts again after flying it the second time. Now for that second flight on the next day, I just flew near my home. I didn't wanna drive out anywhere. The weather was kind of dull and boring and drab, but I just wanted to get it up, get the drone up and start maneuvering it a little bit. Start using the sticks, try to kind of dial in the EXP settings and the sensitivity settings to try to figure out how to control this thing and make the footage look smooth. Now I did lose signal a couple of times and I was only 1200 feet away and I did have a very clear line of sight. So I'm not real sure what was happening. I didn't have any trouble the next day, but that day I had some trouble with the signal. But other than that, I didn't have any problems other than not knowing how to control this drone. So I did get a little bit of footage of some deer walking along the railroad track. So that was kind of cool. I'll put that up here on the screen so you can see it, but I didn't bother him. Don't worry, I didn't fly over them or chase them or anything like that. Now for flight number three, I actually drove out to this spot that I've been flying for the past three years. And it's this train trestle. I wanted to see if I could get some cinematic footage by using that 4K at 60 frames per second. I'm so excited about that 4K 60. But I had a quite a bit of trouble on this flight, especially with the obstacle avoidance. Like every time that the drone was facing the sun, the obstacle avoidance would go off. If I turned 30 degrees either way, it quit. But anytime I was flying anywhere near, you know, towards the direction of the sun, that beeper just kept going off and it was so frustrating. And then at the same time, I was getting the warning on the screen that was saying ambient light was too weak for the obstacle avoidance to work. So apparently it wasn't too weak. So it was very strange and I was getting really frustrated the more that I flew it. And then also the flight was cut short because a sheriff's deputy came upon me. Hello. What's going on, man? Flying my drone. What's that? I'm flying my drone. Flying your drone? Yeah and we had a nice conversation but he suggested that I should not be flying over railroad property now I did record that conversation I made a video on it I'll put it right up here if you want to click on that and watch that after this video uh, it's actually a pretty good video but I actually plan to visit their office real soon and help uh, educate them on the FAA regulations about airspace and things like that so for the fourth flight I drove out to this wind farm I wanted to get that 4k 60 cinematic footage and it was a beautiful day uh, it was just the perfect day for flying it so I was excited to get it up in the air and get some nice footage but once again right away as soon as I started flying I started having more troubles okay so here's the deal does that look good so here's what I experienced today this is uh, day four flight number four with the Phantom 4 Pro V2 plus and a couple things I noticed right there you saw when I was trying to land so right now I'm trying to bring it down I'm trying to back it up as I bring it down and it's not, it's not going backwards. I'm pulling, I'm pulling the strict straight back as I'm going down. Oh, now it's working. I was trying to come backwards as I was um, decreasing my altitude. It wouldn't come backwards. It wouldn't go backwards. The obstacle avoidance warning was not going off, but it wasn't letting me go backwards for the first part of the descent. So I think the sun had the effect. Also, as I was flying into the sun, when I launched, the beeper just kept going off constantly. So anytime I was facing the sun and about 30 degrees either way, that obstacle avoidance warning kept beeping at me. And so that's very, very irritating. I don't know if it's this unit in particular, if that happens on normally with the Phantom 4 Pro, 
but that obstacle avoidance is definitely much more sensitive than the Mavic 2 Pro. So then what I did is I texted a fellow drone pilot and experienced Phantom operator, Ken Heron. He has a YouTube channel as well. And uh, I texted him and I said, I think I got a lemon here. I just, it's just not flying like a Phantom should, you know, because he praises the Phantom so much and he uses it for all of his professional, uh, you know, jobs and duties and things like that. So I told him, I think I have a lemon here. And he said, well, did you calibrate everything, you know, like you're supposed to when you first get a drone? I'm like, yeah, I'm not an idiot. And he's like, well, did you use the DJI assistant and calibrate the sensors with your computer? Maybe. <laughs> so I didn't do that. I didn't calibrate the sensors. And so what I did is I drove home, I calibrated the sensors with a DJI assistant on the computer and take a guess what happened. That's right, it was fixed. It was so much better. It quit acting weird. I did have a couple more problems that I'm gonna tell you about here in a second, but definitely everything was so much better after I did that. So lesson learned, you know, I know you're supposed to do that, but it just totally I just totally spaced it out and I didn't do that. So when you first get a drone, make sure you calibrate the IMU, calibrate the compass, and calibrate the sensors with the DJI Assistant on your computer. So thank you, Ken. Now for my fifth flight, before I did my final review, before I kind of sat down and wrote this review, I just wanted to go out in an open space and just try everything. So I went out to this empty field right next to the frozen river and I tried everything. I flew it in sport mode. I tried to maneuver around some things. I tried most of the intelligent flight modes. I mean, seriously, terrain follow, whoever uses terrain follow. Any of you? No, probably not. But anyway, I tried everything that I could. And a couple of things. Now, first, I'm really disappointed that you still have, not really disappointed, I'm kind of disappointed that you still have to fly directly above an object before you do that point of interest intelligent flight mode, because I love point of interest. It's just an easy way to get nice footage but you have to fly directly over the subject. With the Mavic 2 Pro, I can simply just draw on the screen around the subject and then I can start the point of interest right away. But with the Phantom 4 Pro V2, the Phantom, you have to fly directly over, set that and then back up and then it'll do its point of interest. So I know it's more accurate to fly above your subject and then run it, but still there's gonna be times where it's nice if you could just swipe the screen. Like the other day when I was flying around those wind towers, uh, I couldn't get above the wind towers because the blades are higher than 400 um, feet above ground level. So I had to fly a point of interest manually, which is okay, but it's just much easier if you let the drone do it. So uh, I don't know, maybe that's something they could easily add with a firmware update, just kind of swipe the subject and then do the point of interest. So the other thing is, uh, I did find a intelligent flight mode that I didn't know this drone had that I didn't know any drone had and that's the draw mode and that's where you can just draw on the screen where you want the drone to travel and then hit go and then it just follows that path and it's really really cool and you can set the camera to either follow the the direction that the drone is going or you can set the camera to be in free mode so you can point it whatever direction you want to so it's really, really cool flight mode. Now I did have one hiccup again that day and it had to do with the sun and the obstacle avoidance sensors. I was running the point of interest uh, mode, intelligent flight mode, and it was going around. And as soon as it got to where it was facing the sun, it started to do this. Okay, so now it's having some trouble. I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can get it up. See what it's doing? Obstacle avoidance. So just really, really weird. I just don't know why the sun affects this thing so much, but I guess what I would need to do if I were keeping this, I'd just have to turn off the obstacle avoidance in those situations because you, you can't do, you can't have that. I mean, if you want that nice smooth footage, you can't have it jerking all over the place uh, because the sun is messing with it. That's not the ideal. I mean, I want to have that obstacle avoidance on, but I think it just needs to be done. So anyway, that flight was definitely my favorite one because the weather conditions were perfect for flying. The drone was all calibrated properly like it should have been right away. And then I was starting to become more comfortable with the controls and how the drone behaves. And so there is quite a long learning curve on that. I'm gonna talk about that in a second, but, uh, but after five flights, I felt like I could finally start to get some nice smooth movements. And then what I did later that day, actually yesterday, I went out and I got some more footage of that train trestle because I really wanted to get some cinematic footage with that 4K60. So uh, you're gonna see that here at the end of the video, but, um, but I, I definitely got better every time I flew this drone. So what are my final thoughts on the Phantom 4 Pro V2? Do I think you should get it or do I think you should get the Mavic 2 Pro? 
It's a valid question because they both cost exactly the same right now. And here's what I will tell you. There are three reasons that I think you should choose the Phantom over the Mavic 2 Pro. Number one, that 4K at 60 frames per second is visually stunning. The one inch sensor on this camera that records that resolution at 100 megabits per second is gorgeous. The Mavic footage is nothing to shake a stick at, but this is so much nicer. And then also what you can do in post-production, you can slow down that footage on a 24 frames per second timeline and you can make it look even more cinematic. Reason number two, the Phantom 4 Pro 2.0 is used for more professional work, more professional situations. Much of the drone footage that you see on television comes from a Phantom 4 Pro. The majority of land mapping, inspections, related work are currently obtained with a Phantom. Now, let's say a client is looking for someone to do a job, a pilot, and two pilots walk in that office and one of them's carrying a Mavic 2 Pro and the other one's carrying a Phantom 4 Pro, guess who's more likely to get that job? The Phantom 4 Pro is recognized, it's proven, and it oozes professionalism. And then number three, the Phantom 4 Pro it's just rock solid in the sky. This thing is a flying tank. You've heard people say that before, and I knew it was gonna be steady in the sky, but this thing really is steady in the sky. That is, if you have everything calibrated first. It's just a super dependable drone, and you know it's gonna work every time. The Mavic 2 Pro, yes, that's steady as well, but this is even better. So those are the three reasons to choose the Phantom 4 Pro over the Mavic 2 Pro, but now here are three reasons to pick the Mavic. Number one, the foldable compact design. It's lighter, it's much more convenient to transport. So if you're a traveler of any kind, definitely it's more convenient to have something you can just throw in your bag and take it with you anywhere. Reason number two, it's way more quiet. I can hear this Phantom coming from 800 feet away at 300 feet in the sky. So everyone's gonna look up in the sky and see what's going on when this thing flies over. And number three, in my opinion, the Mavic 2 Pro is just easier to control and maneuver for the everyday person. Yes, everything becomes easier with use and experience, but I think the learning curve on making precise movements with the Mavic 2 Pro is much shorter. I think over the long term, as you learn how to fly a Phantom, definitely that would be the better choice, but for those that wanna get started right away, getting amazing looking footage, the Mavic 2 Pro would be a better choice. And also, I think the controller is just a little better fit and feel for the average person. Now, all that being said, there is one single reason, at least for me, that is a deal breaker on the Phantom 4 Pro. And that is when you're flying against a stiff wind or flying in sport mode, you're gonna see those propellers in the frame. For me, in the year 2020, this should not be a thing any longer. Yeah, back in 2013, it was expected to see those props, but now if you see props in your video, then you're probably thinking something's wrong with your drone. You probably need to calibrate something. So if you're gonna be flying moderately with steady and minimal wind, then yeah, you're gonna be fine. And that's how the majority of drone footage is captured. But there are gonna be situations, there's gonna be times where you're gonna see those prop ghosts and they're gonna be up in the corners and I think it looks about as unprofessional as can be. The bottom line is you really can't go wrong with either of these drones. Does that 4K at 60 outweigh having the much more noisier drone and the occasional prop in the frame? Or does the stealth and folding design outweigh having no mechanical shutter on the Mavic or no 4K at 60? You know, those are questions that only you can answer for yourself. But I hope I gave you at least a little better idea of which way to go today. And if I did help you in any way, please click on that thumbs up button. Also, I'm gonna have uh, product links down in the description. So if you're trying to decide which one of these to get and you do decide which one you're gonna get, you can go ahead and click on one of those links to purchase. And when you're done watching this video, I invite you to go ahead and browse around the channel, see if there's anything else that you find of value or of interest and if you do click on that subscribe button i would love to have you join this community i want to thank you for watching the video today have a wonderful day and as always fly safe and fly smart